then <clears throat> some people might say it's a just solipsism. Right? If I say, well, this is my universe, this is my quantum reality, and you guys might have yours, but it's mine, you know. The other question people say, well, why don't I get whatever I want? Right? Like two people come home, they've both just seen what they believe, right? and they're both driving towards this intersection. One's like, I can create my reality, my night's going to be green. And the other guy is like, whoa, I can create reality, my night's going to be green. And they're both driving towards the same intersection. Right? What's going to happen? Is they both going to be green lights and they're going to jam into each other? No. One of them is going to have a red light, and the other one is going to have a green light. And that's why I call it a multi-subsistic universe. It's my reality right now. And that's why the universe is very elegant and that it saves itself all that data storage is intertwined with all of your realities right now. So whatever you're perceiving right now, you know, interlace this and that's why I'm talking about multi solipsistic universe, because it's not just one. It's all of these intertwining and overlapping. So sometimes those two people when they come to that place, the one person, you know, gets a red light and they're like, it's always like that. See, I thought this wouldn't work. You know, this is my life. This is what it is. I'm always getting the red light. He's right back into the negative thought pattern, and ultimately, because he might have propensities emotionally or mentally that lead him to have a negative self-image and to allow him to have that putting down. Whereas the other person maybe just broke out of it and said, Wow, I just did that. I made a green light. This is so cool. I'm going to do more. I can do, I can do this. I can create reality. And from then on, they go and create more and more and get a new job and better, la 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 all that good stuff. Right? So... The other thing that I said is karma, it's your own personal propensities. We all came here in this world with some propensities. But right? even on the very basic level, you can find out about them if you look at your astrology, if you look at your numerology, if you look at all those different systems, your tarot cards, but all those different systems in a quantum reality where this would be true, they would talk to you and they would give you some things. Actually, every single thing talks to you, every single person that you meet every, is a mirror for you. You pull them into your life, and I'll get into that in a moment. But Coming back to that meaning of life, what we deduct from that is ultimately to say, you're here so the experience of you can be had, right? With all your karma, with all that stuff around it, but you're here so consciousness can know what it's like to be you. Now, what does that mean, mm -hmm. right? If I say it's the meaning of life, and so, oh, I'm here to experience myself, great. You know? What does that mean, right? <coughs> This is where I'm going to go and talk a little bit about the first thing. If you say we're here, to observe for consciousness, and the very first thing we have to do is clean our windshield. We have a lot of crap on there. We don't really see things clearly. Right? Just on a very basic notion, your, your eyes send about a million bits of information per second to your brain. And what your brain does, coming back to that idea of perception, it actually projects. It says, I know what tables are, I know what people are, I know what eyes are, what hair is, what this is, what that is. And so all that data that comes into the brain, the brain starts evaluating and thinking about what it is and what it might be. It has a bit of time because it actually takes 30 milliseconds for the signal from your toe to go all the way up your spine into your brain. So your brain actually holds all of that information from the eyes for about 30 milliseconds, which means where you're, you're all experiencing reality delayed at all points in time. Right? But what it does, it takes that and then conceptualizes it around and says, I know what this is, I know what this is, and ultimately says, this is what I'm seeing. But what you're seeing there is about 5% of actual reality. Right? So you, and, and with that, it's because you have your own things, right? Like if you take two people and you put them in front of an antique store, and the one person is a philosopher and the other person is a biologist, right? the philosopher goes right to, oh, what kind of books do I have here? And the biologist goes right to, oh, this is a beautiful microscope. They don't see all the other things that are there, right? Because they're projecting, they're projecting, what do I need right now, what do I want? They don't see, right? So the first thing we need to do is, Clean that up, and we'd have to look for repeating patterns in our life and say, I'm keep dating the same guy, or I keep dating the same girl, or I keep having the same boss, or I keep having the same job. That's something to pay attention to. Nothing should be repeating itself in your life. Again, information is only if there's something new. If you're getting a repetition of something, that's not new, even if it's pleasant. If it's not new, you know what it is. It's not information. It's not something that brings you forward. Right? So anything that repeats itself is something to take a look at and say, what's up with that? You know, and obviously there are certain things that do repeat themselves. You have every morning, or every day at least, you know, hopefully you take a shit and you pee and you do certain things and your hair grows and you breathe. So there are certain things that you keep doing, right? And there are certain things that are imprinted on our genes. To some extent, DNA is very difficult to change. It changes over time because we look very different than our ancestors. That alone should be an interesting thought. And, but it doesn't normally change very quickly. I mean, there's... Uh, Conditioning, you know, which is every time I do something, I draw a little path here, 
follow a path here and ultimately I have that little path and I know how to walk and I know how to talk and I know how to feed myself. And then there's imprints, which are essentially states where your brain is very malleable, like for example in some times of fear or uh, when you're in the middle of sex or certain things where your brain is kind of just open and you're not really ego driven, you're kind of just open and anything that happens in those moments gets imprinted very deeply. A lot of people have memories, if you go back to school, there was that one teacher that told you that you were stupid. And part of you still believes that you can't do math because of that. You know I mean? But it's just a belief, it's just a very deeply ingrained belief. And it's sometimes so deeply ingrained that it actually has, it also has an effect on that um, vital body that we talked about earlier, on that subtle body. But emotional, strong emotional experiences will leave marks here as well as in your actual physical body. And there's a correlation. If you constantly walk around telling yourself that you hate yourself and you're not good enough and you're really not good and you're really not good, you're really not good, ultimately you will get sick. Something will go and kill yourself. But if you think about what cancer does, cancer eats you because you're not worthy, you're not good enough. In your own mind, maybe. And again, those are subconscious patterns. So I'm not saying that anybody who gets any of those diseases deserves them or creates them. It's a very different, very important distinction to make. Because sometimes it's this karma, those propensities, might not come even from this lifetime. You know, why do little babies die? Those kind of things. So you can't you know, put a causation on there. It's very important to remember. It's a correlation, it's not a causation. <clears throat> and with any act, right, anything that you do, when you do it for the very first time, it's a creative act. Right? Once you do it again and again and again, it comes a habit and slowly your will actually sinks into the thing, into the si thing itself. And then it's, the cigarette smokes you, you don't smoke the cigarette. I know that because I smoke. <laughs> I find myself many times having that cigarette just deciding that I should smoke right now and it's not me. It's the addiction that's doing that right now. All right? So my first step of where I'm at right now is to say, I'm going to make this a habit again. I want to start paying attention to it. Every time I put something in my mouth, I'm going to be like, hey, wait a second, why do I do this right now? Am I just doing it because I always do this? Or do I want to do this? All right? This is a creative act of mine. I'm not choosing to do this. And if you want to make, change your materiality, you have to transform all those patterns that I talked about, the emotional patterns, the mental propensities. You can't change them. There are systems for that, and we'll get to that. 